so welcome to the next lecture second lecture of math 120 linear algebra uh, in the previous lecture we discussed some preliminary concepts of uh, linear equations what are linear equations and uh, how to manipulate them we discussed <coughs> a system of 2 by 2 linear equations uh, uh, a banana apple problem in which you go to the market and buy two articles and you want to know the amount you paid for banana and apple in fact any general linear system linear systems a general linear system in n variables and m equations can be can be written as a general linear system in uh you can say m equations and n unknowns can be written as <coughs> we write them uh, we write it in a way a11x1 plus a12x2 plus so on plus a1nx n is equal to b1 there's the first linear equation and then a21x1 plus a22x2 plus so on plus a2nx n yes is there any question please mute your mics so that other people don't get disturbed now and so on so it's a general form of uh, any linear system a m 1 x 1 plus a m 2 x 2 plus so on plus a m n x n is equal to b m so this is uh, a general linear system we call it system 1 in this system you can see that there are n unknowns and m equations so it's uh, a rectangular kind of uh, linear system in which uh, the number of equations and number of unknowns are not equal so I have a question yes so why we are starting it with a11 instead of a1 it's basically a11 just to make the notation compatible a11 the first index in a11 can you see this uh, let me write here a a11 the first index specifies the equation number equation number the second index specifies or tells us unknown number okay unknown number this one if you don't use two index here then uh you cannot describe all the coefficients of uh, this left hand side so a11 means this is the first equation and it is the coefficient of first unknown okay a12 means a12 is the coefficient of first equation and second unknown means x2 and the last one is the coefficient of mth equation and nth unknown xn i hope you get it now yes sir it's clear now okay thank you
Now, um, this is your linear system, and this linear system can be written in the form of a matrix. Uh, let me write here so that you can see it along with the linear system. Now, this linear system can be written in the form of a matrix, as we have written a two by two system in the previous lecture. Let me add the people. People are still joining in. Kindly join before 12.30 in the lecture. Now, <clears throat> the coefficients of the left-hand side, we can put them in the form of a matrix, A11, A12, so on, A1n, and then A21, A22, so on, A2n, and so on, and so on, and so on. A M1, A M2, and so on. The last coefficient is A M N. So N2 multiplied by the unknown uh, variables X1, X2, so on, Xn. Equal to the right hand side vector B1, B2, so on, B M, because we have M equation, so we must have B M here. Remember this. Now, if we call this as a matrix A, then we can write A times, and this as a vector or a column vector, we call it X vector, and the right hand side is again a column vector, so we call it B vector. So in a compact form, we can write any linear system uh, in the matrix form in this way. I hope you get it, <clears throat> where A is the matrix, X is the unknown vector, and B is the right inside vector. This is how we can write any linear system into a matrix form. For example, <clears throat> let me write one system example. If we have 2x my x1, or you can say x, y, z, if you are working in with three unknowns, you can write 2x1, uh, either this, 3x2 minus x3 is equal to 2. And uh, you can have uh, minus plus 7x2 minus 3x3 is equal to 0. And uh, x1 3 minus uh, 5x2 plus 9x3 is equal to 0. Sorry, not 0, maybe some non number, non zero number, this. Now, in this linear system, you can see that here we don't have any coefficient of x1. So you can put it 0. Now, this linear system can be written in the form of a matrix the coefficient of x1. And then x2, x3. So 2 minus this, 3 minus 1. Yes, 0, 7, minus, zero, seven three, minus 3, 3, three minus, minus 5, five nine. and 9 times x1, x1 x2, x3. x3 is equal to the right hand side vector 2, 0, minus 1. So minus this one. is your a times x is equal to b. Into b. Now you can see that here a is. Uh, the order of A is what? Order of A is? It's 3 it's cross three, 3. 3 to 3. 3 cross 3. And order of X is? Order of X is? 3 into 1. 3 into 1. And order of B similarly is 3 into 1. Uh, I hope you get how to write the, uh, any linear system into the matrix form. Now, if we don't have three equations, if we have two equations, then similarly, we can remove this thing from uh, here, the matrix will be of this form, but the unknown vector has three unknowns. So it would be x1, x2, x3, and the right-hand side vector has two values. So uh, we'll stop it here, this one. This is also possible. You can have two equations and three unknowns. So this is how we write linear systems into matrix form. Now, uh, the next thing is, Homogeneous linear systems. Okay. 
Homogeneous linear systems are those systems in which the right hand side vector B is zero vector. If B vector is zero in system one, in linear system one, in fact, you can uh, say the linear uh, system of linear equations as a linear system. Uh, one, which we have written here above this one, if we call it a system one, <clears throat> if the right hand side vector is, it has all zero entries, then you would have zero, zero, and so on, zero here. Then in that case, uh, the system would this become, would be continuous linear system. it would become A times X is equal to zero, not only zero, it's a simple way, zero. You have to put a zero vector here. Otherwise, it would be wrong. I hope you get it. What is the zero vector? A zero vector is what? It has all the zero entries. Uh, this is basically the basic definition, formal definition of a linear system. Uh, the linear system in which B is not equal to zero, they're called non-homogeneous linear systems. If B is equal to zero vector, then this system is called homogeneous linear system. Whereas if B, if B is not equal to zero, if, if B is, B vector is not equal to zero vector, if at least one of the entry of B vector is non-zero, then we call it a non-zero vector. Okay, at least one entry of the right hand side vector must not be zero, then it is non zero vector. If B is not equal to zero vector, then we call it non homogeneous linear system. Okay. And the order of any linear system is what? It is basically, uh, you can say that a general linear system of order, of order, of order is what? Order of a linear system is what? It is basically number of equations times number of unknowns. So this is the order of that linear system. Remember this. Now let's have uh, an example of similar kind. Why we write systems, linear systems, and what is the solution of uh, uh, any linear system? Solution of any linear system, let's discuss it. Solution of linear systems. we have that linear system one, which contains n unknowns, x1, x2, so on, xn, then any real value of these uh, unknowns, x1, for example, x1 is equal to s1, x2 is equal to s2, so on, xn is equal to sn, where these s1, s2, so on, sn, they are real numbers. They belongs to R. If all these values, when we substitute these values in each equation of the linear system, okay, if we substitute or insert, if we substitute all these values, all values of x1, x2, so on xn, this, all the equations, uh, all the equations, turns, turn into, into uh, a true identity. True identity or true statement, you can say. Then we say that, then 
we say that you can write it in the column vector, in fact. Then we say that x1, x2, so on, xn is equal to s1, s2, so on, sn is a solution of linear system one, okay? Whether it is homogeneous or non-homogeneous, any set of values for those unknown uh, variables, if we insert all those values in each equation, each equation turns into uh, a true statement or a true identity, then we say that uh, all these values, they are solution of the linear system. Now, let's do an example of this thing. Let's start with the linear systems, uh, uh, two by two linear systems, okay? Sir, can you shift the camera a bit to the left, please? Just a second, please. Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit. Now, I hope you can see everything. Yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. Two by two linear systems. Uh, two by two linear system means uh, there are two equations and two unknowns. And uh, in the previous lecture, we discussed uh, an example of uh, apple and banana. Let's start with the same kind of example. Uh, for example, if we have 5x plus y is equal to 3, and uh, 2x minus y is equal to 4. Now, you can solve this equation. Uh, it's a very simple system. You uh, must have solved these kind of systems in your uh, intermediate. I hope you can solve it simultaneously either or uh, by using substitution method. Now, after solving it, we get x is equal to... Say so x is equal to... 1. So x is equal to 1. And y is equal to... 1. Minus 2. Now, these yes. are two values of unknown variables. So you call it, this is your S1 and this is your S2. These are real numbers. Now, when we insert these two values in each equation, for example, in first equation, five into one plus minus two, this is what it is. Five minus two is three, which is three. equal to right hand side, which is three again. Now, the second equation, if we insert all these values here in the second equation, it becomes two, one, minus, minus two, two plus two, it is four, which is equal to right hand side. Four. So both equations, they have turned into uh, a true statement. A true statement is what? Means three is equal to three. This gives us three is equal to three, and this gives us four is equal to four. So these two are true statements. Three, three ke equal hota na? Theke? If at least one of these equations, all the equations, theke? if if at least one of these equations in the system, if that equation doesn't satisfy, means if that equation doesn't turn into a true statement, then we say that this is not a solution of the given linear system. If at least one, if at least one equation uh, doesn't turn into identity, a true identity, then we cannot say that this is the solution of the given linear system. So how do we write solution? Uh, solution is basically what? You can say that x, y, it is what? Uh, one minus two. So this is the solution of the given linear system. I hope you get it. Uh, there is another example of uh, two by three system. Two by three system, you can see in my lecture slides. I hope you will get it. Now let's discuss a um, solution graphically. What does mean, what does it mean that this is the solution of the given linear system? We can discuss it graphically as well. Now, in a linear equation in two variables, what is this graphically on, on two-dimensional plane? What is this? 
This is a straight line. line. There is no, a straight line. It's, it's a, a straight, straight line. Yes, it's a straight line. For example, you choose five uh, x plus y is equal to three. How can you plot it easily on the two-dimensional plane, x y plane? You take so zero. You, you uh, top co you take, common. The like most zero, zero. The easiest y intercept. Yes. X intercept. Yes, this is the most uh, easy method of plotting a straight line on two-dimensional plane. You find their x-intercepts and y-intercepts. X-intercept means uh, that line, the point where this line crosses x-axis. That would be the x-intercept of that equation. Okay? X-axis ko cross kahan pe karti hai jahan pe y zero hoga. Definitely. Ab y zero hai, agar aap isme y zero put karein, so you can get the value of x, which is three by five. Okay? So you have one point three by five comma zero. So this is your x-intercept. And the second one is y-intercept. You find the y-intercept of this equation. Okay? Y-intercept is what? That straight line, the point where that straight line uh, crosses y-axis. So y-axis pe kahan pe cross karegi jahan pe x zero hoga. Now, if you put x equal to zero here, what do you get here? You get y is equal to three. So you get another point, uh, which is y-intercept. Now you can, you have two points. You can easily plot that straight line, this one, five x plus y is equal to three. Now let's draw this line on x, y plane. You have two points. Now, if, if, if this is your, uh, x y plane then 3 by 5 is 0 0.6 so if you have one here two here then 0 0.6 must be somewhere here and your uh, this is your first point it is your 3 by 5 comma 0 and the second point is 0 3 so x is 0 and y is 1 2 3 so this is your second point so you can join these two points to get the straight line. So this will be your first straight line. Now, uh, similarly, we, you, we can plot the second line uh, by inserting y is equal to zero. You get x is equal to two. So you get two zero point. And by inserting x equal to zero, you can have y is equal to minus four. So you get zero minus four. This is, this is your X intercept and this is your Y intercept. Now you have this point two zero and the other point is zero minus four. It's uh, one minus two minus three minus four. So this is your second point. You can join these two points to get the straight line second one. So this is your two X minus Y is equal to four line. And this is your uh, 5x plus y is equal to 3 line. This one. Now, what is the solution? Solution is the point of intersection of these two lines. Now, what is this? What is this point? This is 1 here, and here you have 2. So your solution is 1, 2. So in... Uh, Basically, in two equations, if you have minus, two straight lines, and minus two, uh, minus minus लिखो यार, बोल सो देखो, minus नहीं लिखो, चलें कोई बात नहीं। अच्छा, so the solution of any two straight lines in 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 two unknowns, in two equations, its solution is basically what it is the point of intersection of these two lines. I hope you get it. If you have any question, you can ask me. Geometrically or graphically, the solution set is what is the point of intersection of two straight lines. Now, are there any other possibilities of solutions here? Anyone? No, sir. No, sir. Uh, oh. Sir, I have a question. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. So when we are like uh, solving the uh, linear equations simultaneously or using uh, that substitution method, sometimes we, uh, it appears that we have two values for x and two values for y. 
So when we are thinking it like in our head, like it's not possible that using two straight lines that you get two solutions. Then how is that possible that you sometimes get two solutions for X and Y? When did you get two values for linear equations in two variables? When did you get two values for X and two values of Y? It's not possible. The one, at least one of the equations should be quadratic equation if you get two values for X and two values of Y. It is not possible for linear equations that you get two point of intersection. Is it possible that two straight lines intersect, intersect at two points? No, sir. It, it's not possible. So you cannot get two values of X and corresponding two values of Y. No, now there are three possibilities here. <laughs> Kindly mute your mic. Kindly send me. Uh, sir? Ji, ji, uh, can there be infinitely many solutions? Yes. Uh, Kasim Rashid, kindly mute your mic. Any other, just be kissika again mic on head or kindly mute your mic. Now, uh, I, I asked you a question Are there any other possibilities of solutions? Yes, sir, there are. Yes, tell me. Sir, if these two lines are overlapping each other, then we can say there are infin infinitely many solutions. Yes, and other option? When the two lines are parallel, we say that there are no And sir, when they are parallel to each other, yes. and so when they are parallel to each other, we can say that there is no solutions at all. Yes. So we have only three possibilities while solving uh, linear equations in two unknowns and uh, two equations to get two by two linear system. We have three possibilities. Either we get one solution, which is the unique solution. We call it unique solution. Okay, uh, solution, you can say here, solution possibilities. Two by two system, two by two system. It's only for two by two system, not for three by three. Okay, we'll discuss three by three after this. Now, the first one is unique solution. You get only one solution. The second option is you get infinite many solutions. And the third option is no solution. We have only these three possibilities for a two by two linear system. Either we get unique solution or we get infinite many solution or we, we can have no solution of that linear system. Geometrically, graphically, what does it mean? Uh, the first option I told you already on that above example, when the two straight lines crosses each other, they can cross each other at most at one point. Okay, so that will be uh, the point of intersection of two straight lines that we call it unique solution. Now, the second possibility graphically is what? If we have, this is the first line and the second line is also on the top of uh, the first line. Okay, the two lines coincide with each other. One line is on the top of uh, the first line. The other line is on the top of the first line. Okay, what, what is this possibility uh, mathematically Aapke paas maha pe equation thi 5x plus y is equal to 3. Now, I'm going to write another equation, 10x plus 2y is equal to 6. Now, we have a 2 by 2 system again, but if you look at closely, then you can notice that the second equation is just the multiple of first equation. If we multiply first equation with two, we can get the second equation. Now, if you try to solve this equation, uh, you just multiply this equation by two by using uh, uh, elimination method. Okay. 
simultaneously, if you try to solve them simultaneously, you cannot solve uh, this system. Because if you multiply this equation by two on both sides, and then you subtract the second equation, everything will be canceled out. You will have nothing. You cannot find the value of x and y. Sir, yes. Question. yes, yes. So in, in, in terms of uh, that S1 and S2, which we were doing uh, like 10 minutes before now, can we yeah. say that in this particular scenario, S1 is equal to S2? Or can we like build a similar relationship between that? Yes, we are going to discuss uh, now this thing. What would be the solution in this case? Okay. Ask me again this question if you don't understand uh, after my explanation. Okay. 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 Okay, now what to do in this, in this case when we have two exactly identical equations? Okay. The one line is on the top of uh, the other line because if we plot this line and again this line, you would see definitely that there is only, you get only one line. In this, in this situation, what we do, uh, we have 5x plus y is equal to 3. So this is your equation, how to solve it how to get its solution. In this situation, we will definitely get infinite many solutions. This is your second uh, uh, possibility of the solution, infinite many solutions. Because if the second line is on the top of the first line, then how many point of intersections are there between these two lines? How many? Infinite. Infinite, infinite, infinite. 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 Infinite many point of intersections are there on the uh, uh, for these two lines. Okay. In fact, it is not infinite many. It is uncountable. There is a difference between infinite and uncountable. Uh, anything which we can count, but it doesn't end. It is called infinite. But the points on these two lines are not infinite. They are uncountable. We cannot count them. We don't know what point comes next to a certain point. So we have, we, we basically we say here that we have infinite many solutions, but in, in fact, technically uh, they are uncountable solutions. Okay. Now in this case, what we do, we introduce free variable. Free variable, variable or variables if we have uh, a bigger system, uh, three by three, four by four, then in that, that case, we have to introduce more free variables. Now, what is a free variable? We can choose free variable either of uh, these two variables. For example, uh, I assume that I introduce, I suppose, or you can say let y is equal to t, where t is some free variable and t belongs to r. t is what? t is any real number. Sir? Yes? Sir, do you mean like a parameter? Yes, a parameter. Okay. okay. We assume that y has a value t, where t is some parameter which belongs to r. It, it, it can be any real number, okay? Now, if we say that y is equal to t, then we, we insert back this value of y here in this equation and we try to find the value of x. So after inserting y is equal to t, we get three here and what would be the value of x? It would be three minus t times one over five. So this will be your value of x. Now value of X depend on the value of Y. If we choose a particular value of Y, for example, T is equal to one, then its solution would be what? If we choose here, T is equal to one, what will be the value of X? It will be three two by five. five. Sorry, two by five. Okay. So uh, in a particular case, if we choose, t is equal to one. Uh, if we choose t is equal to one, then uh, x is equal to two by five, 
and y is equal to what? One. So our solution is two by five comma one. So this is your solution. This is your one solution. Now, how many values of t can be chosen? Infinite. Infinite as many. As, as much as we wish. So t basically belongs to r and r is the set of real numbers. Okay. So t has uncountable values, infinite many values. So jitni t ki values aap choose kar sakte hain, itna hi aapke paas solutions honge. Kitni t ki values choose kar sakte hain, infinite many, so you would have infinite many solutions. In fact, uh, x is equal to what? One by five, uh, sorry, one by five, kya tha? So it was one over five, into, one over three five into three minus two. 1 over 5 into 3 minus t. This is your x value of x and y is equal to t. So these are, in fact, uh, your parametric equations for that straight line. And these are parametric equations, which involve only sir, one parameter. Yes? Sir, can we consider the actual variable instead of introducing t? And when x uh, would be something that would why would that would thing? confuse other people. Okay. You can say Y belongs to R. Okay. But it is better to introduce some parameter uh, which belongs to R and specify its domain. Then it would be better to write the solution in this way. This is basically, uh, you can say notation wise, it's good. Okay. It's more comprehensible uh, than leaving y as a y. Now, how to uh, further write the solution? Now, you know the value of x. x is 1 over 5 times, uh, you can open it, in fact. It is basically now 3 by 5 minus 1 by 5 t, and your y is t. Now, if you try to write this solution in the vector form, then how can you write it? You can put these x and y in a vector form and you can put this right inside in a vector form I mean, as well. T would, and t this one and t. t. Okay. Now, <coughs> you can further now, write this now solution. We take, yes. Now yes, so yes. we can take t, we can uh, take t as common. Now, yes. Now, we cannot take t common from here. Okay, we can write here zero plus t. Now you have to separate the constant terms and you have to separate the terms which involve t. So we can separate these two vectors. Uh, three by five, we can write here three by five zero plus one by five t and then t. Okay, and further this can be written as three by five zero plus t common t. times, so you have a minus aega. So minus one by five and one. So this is how you can write the solution uh, for the given linear system in a parametric form. This is basically parametric form of the equation of that straight lines, parametric forms of that linear system. Okay, so this is how you write the solution. Now, in fact, excuse me, sir. Uh, parametric wala jo hai, hum normally bhi karenge, ya sirf tab karenge jab infinitely many solutions ho. You can do it only if you have infinite many solutions. If you have unique solution, you'll have only one solution. You can write that solution in a parametric form because there is no parameter involved in that solution. Okay? Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, take care. Now you can say that here, this is the parametric form of the solution. And uh, uh, this is your solution where you have to mention here that T, that parameter belongs to R. You get it? I hope you get it. If you have any question regarding this example, you can ask me. Otherwise we are going to discuss the next uh, option, which is basically the third option, no solution.
in what in in what situation we would have no solution so when it's parallel when L1 line 1 is parallel to the line 2 but we know it mathematically graphically sorry but what happens mathematically if uh, a solution doesn't have any uh, solution so yeah, mathematically so. mathematically sir it means that uh, both of these equations the line l1 l2 have the same gradient have same gradient but what would be the different thing different y different y intercept y intercept that is basically the only option and in a linear system this situation can be seen uh, how we can see it uh, i write again 10x plus 2y is equal to 7 now you can see that the second equation the left hand side of the second equation is a multiple of left hand side of the first equation but not the right hand side you got it yes sir the left hand side in this linear system the left hand side this left hand side is a multiple of the left hand side of equation 1 but right hand side is not the multiple of the right hand side of equation 1 okay you cannot say that this is 2 uh, se multiply kare puri equation ko aur isme subtract kare to aapke paas kya hoga for example aap pehli equation ko 2 se multiply kare to kya aayega aapke paas 6 and what would be the second equation uh, 2y is equal to 7 this the left hand sides are same but the right hand sides are not same now if you subtract these two equations what do you get you cancel this you get zero here is equal to what minus 1 which is not a true statement this is not possible zero is not equal to minus 1 if you have this situation while solving equation simultaneously then we say that these two straight lines are parallel and they and the given linear system doesn't have any solution it's basically uh you can say inconsistent system or you can say ill posed system okay now uh let me give you these definitions uh, i hope you get this thing if you have any question in this example you can ask me anyone any question sir is this limited to 2 by 2 linear systems or does this apply to other ones as well it applies to others as well but uh, uh, it would be difficult to see whether uh, if you have a 4 by 4 or 10 by 10 system it would be difficult to see uh, this thing for that system we will discuss some other methods some other techniques in order to know whether a given linear system has a solution or not and in that equation in in what situation uh, two equations in that given particular linear system are parallel to each other okay we'll discuss some advanced techniques some uh, you can say uh, more sophisticated techniques to 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 know this thing whether in a 10 by 10 linear system uh, two equations are parallel or not okay we'll discuss um, sir i have this other question as well yesterday we were doing the determinants of matrices yes. and we determined whether lines were parallel or not in that case as well because we were trying to construct a parallelogram so how does this relate to that this is just another way of uh, doing it right no it's basically everything has a relation these things are related to each other now we are talking about straight lines yesterday we were talking about matrix the coefficient matrix of this linear system now uh, that applies here as well now you have this solution of the given linear system we have uh, calculated here if we try to write this linear system into a matrix form you get 5 1 2 1 minus 1 times x y is equal to 3 4 now this is your linear system and uh, if you try to Uh, investigate all these things infinite many solutions are uh, no solution uh, then you can uh, see this thing uh, if you call this a matrix a 5 1 2 minus 1 yesterday we were talking about only about this matrix 
it has two columns, five, two, and minus one, one. If these two columns are basically, if do, these two vectors, if you call it u vector and we call it v vector, if they are different from each other, if they are independent of each other, okay, means uh, these two vectors are not collinear, neither they are uh, parallel. Okay, parallel and collinear vectors, they are, you can say that they are uh, uh, identical because if two vectors are basically parallel, we can, they have same directions. We can even shift the other vector and uh, we can uh, place it on the top of the first vector. In fact, they are collinear. So uh, if these two vectors are not collinear, in that case, we can make a parallelogram and the determinant of that matrix is what? The determinant is what? It is, uh, it is the area of that parallelogram. Okay? Now, when these two vectors are collinear, we are unable to find the area because a straight line cannot have area. In that case, these vectors, they have same directions. So either they are parallel or they coincide with each other. It means that the straight lines, either they are parallel or they are on the top of each other. In this situation, we are unable to find the unique solution. But the, if these two vectors, if they have different directions, in that case, you can find the area and the determinant must not be equal to zero. If the determinant is not equal to zero, then we, the, this linear system must have a unique solution. I hope you get it, how to relate these things with each other. Who asked the question? Are you, are you okay with uh, Yes, sir, I get it. So basically, sir, uh, if we have a, a linear system and we put it in uh, the matrix form and we can just, uh, you know, check by the determinant method as well, whether or not we have a unique solution or either one of the others. Yes, this is the way. Thank you, sir. Okay, good. Let's move forward sir, then. Ji, beta, ji, bale, bale, bale. Sir, jo homogeneous linear systems hai, unka jo, unka koi solution hota hai unique? Homogeneous linear system ka agar unique solution ho. Again, technically, uh, if we have homogeneous linear system here, theek hai? Invertible matrices, uh, padhe hai aapne, inverse of a matrix. Two by two yes, matrix sir. inverse, yes, okay. Now, if we have a homogeneous linear system, then and plus the coefficient matrix determinant is not zero. Coefficient matrix ka determinant kya hoga? Five plus, sorry, plus one, two, minus one times x, y equal to zero, zero. So this is your a times x is equal to zero vector. If the determinant of A matrix is not zero, then, then what? It means A is, A is invertible. A inverse exists. Okay, you got it? Are you agree with me? Agar kisi bhi matrix ka determinant zero nahi hai, to uska A inverse definitely exist karega. Agar A inverse exist karega, so यहाँ पे आपके पास ये homogeneous linear system है, तो हम क्या कर सकते हैं? दोनों sides पे a inverse को आप multiply कर दें, ठीक है? You get a inverse times zero. Now a inverse times a is what? It is identity. And here a inverse times zero is what? X is equal to zero. So this one. In homogeneous linear system, if the coefficient matrix is invertible if, if its determinant is non zero then that homogeneous linear system has only one solution which is what which is the zero solution and we call it trivial solution okay zero solution sir please can you repeat this point zero solution or we call it trivial solution if in a homogeneous linear system, koi bhi order ho uska, 10 by 10, 2 by 2, 3 by 3. If in a homogeneous linear system, if the coefficient matrix is invertible, invertible means 
if its determinant is not equal to zero. Agar iska determinant zero nahi hai, then we can invert this matrix. We can take this matrix on the other side. Okay, by using this uh, these little steps, because A inverse into A is always identity. If we multiply a matrix with this with with its inverse, we get definitely identity matrix. Identity matrix. I hope you know what is identity matrix. We, I shall explain these matrices to to you uh, after this explanation. Now, A inverse into A is identity. If we multiply identity with any vector or matrix, it it is it it remains same, and the right hand side becomes zero. So, in a homogeneous linear system, if the coefficient matrix is invertible, that is, if its uh, uh, determinant is non-zero, then that homogeneous linear system always has uh, always have only one solution, which is zero solution, and we call it um, uh, trivial solution of that linear system, homogeneous linear system. Okay. In order to get non-trivial solutions of a homogeneous linear system. I'm, I'm, I'm repeating it. In order to get non-trivial, non-trivial means non-zero solutions. Zero solution ko hum trivial solution kehenge, or non-zero solutions ko hum non-trivial solution kehenge. ठीक है? In order to get non-trivial solutions of a homogeneous linear system, the coefficient matrix should be singular matrix. The coefficient matrix should be singular matrix. It means its determinant must be zero. In that case. We will have infinite many solutions. For the homogeneous linear systems, we have only two options. Third option is not possible. What was the third option? No solution. For homogeneous linear system, we must have either trivial solution or infinite many non-trivial solutions. Homogeneous linear system के लिए तीसरी option नहीं है. ठीक है? नो सोल्यूशन ये वाली ऑप्शन नहीं होगी क्योंकि आपने देखा था यहां पे नो सोल्यूशन कब होता है जब आपके राइट एंड साइड जो हैं वो डिफरेंट हो लेफ्ट एंड साइड सेम हो अब राइट एंड साइड होमोजिनस लिनियर सिस्टम में जीरो है सारी तो आप इनको जिस मर्जी कांस्टेंट से मल्टीप्लाई करें यू विल गेट जीरो अगेन ऑन द राइट एंड साइड सो दिस पॉसिबिलिटी इज नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर होमोजिनस लिनियर सिस्टम होमोजिनस लिनियर सिस्टम मस्ट हैव सोल्यूशन either they have unique solution which is zero solution trivial solution or they have infinite many solutions i hope you get it if you have any question you can ask me sir aapne kis tarah bataya tha ki hum non trivial solutions kis tarah nikalenge uska method kya tha method to abhi humne discuss nahi kiya theek hai method abhi humne discuss nahi kiya humne ye kaha hai ki non trivial solutions jo hai homogeneous linear system ke उस वक्त पॉसिबल होंगे जब आपके पास जो कोफिशियंट मैट्रिक्स है उसका डिटर्मिनेंट जीरो होगा ठीक है अगर नॉन जीरो होगा तो डेफिनेटली उसका यूनिक सोल्यूशन आएगा विच वुड बी अ जीरो सोल्यूशन और ट्रिवियल सोल्यूशन वी कॉल इट आई होप यू गेट इट यस थैंक यू सर सर सिंगुलर मैट्रिक्स क्या होता है सिंगुलर मैट्रिक्स इज अ मैट्रिक्स हुज डिटर्मिनेंट इज इक्वल टू जीरो वी कॉल इट सिंगुलर मैट्रिक्स ठीक है सर तो जब सिंगुलर होता है तो फिर क्या होता है उसका डिटर्मिनेंट जीरो होगा उसका और अगर डिटर्मिनेंट जीरो होगा तो होमोजेनस लीनियर सिस्टम के इनफिनिट मेनी नॉन ट्रिवियल सोल्यूशन एग्जिस्ट करेंगे यहां पर मैंने लिखा है ठीक है ट्रिवियल सोल्यूशन इज वॉट जीरो सोल्यूशन जीरो सोल्यूशन को हम ट्रिवियल सोल्यूशन कहेंगे नॉन जीरो सोल्यूशन को हम क्या कहेंगे नॉन ट्रिवियल सोल्यूशन ठीक है राइट सर थैंक यू नाउ आई होप यू गेट ऑल द थिंग्स अबाउट अ टू बाय टू लीनियर सिस्टम आई होप यू गेट इट इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन यू कैन आस्क यू नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस थ्री बाय थ्री सिस्टम नाउ एंड देन वी विल जर्नलाइज दिस all these concepts to uh, a n by n system or 10 by 10 20 by 20 or any other thing okay
Now we are going to discuss three by three linear systems. Uh, we have uh, three possibilities again for the three by three uh, linear systems as well. They either have a unique solution, but in that case, a unique solution, unique solution in that case, you would have three straight lines, uh, maybe in three dimension. And those straight lines, they, uh, they coincide at a single point. But in three dimension, there is another possibility. Uh, if you have a straight line of this kind, for example, uh, this one, this system, x minus y plus 2z is equal to 5. And uh, 2x minus 2y plus 4z is equal to 10. And the other one is 3x minus 3y plus 6z is equal to 15. Now, in order to solve this linear system, which are three unknowns and three equations, there are, again, three possibilities. Uh, there's a question in the chat window. Maybe let me see. It's a connection. So if determined A is 0, then there are infinite many solutions, whatever the case, right? Talaha <coughs> Ishfaq. Uh, do you still have this question? If determinant A is zero, there are infinite many solutions, whatever the case, right? Only for homogeneous linear systems. If the determinant is zero, the coefficient matrix of a homogeneous linear system, if the determinant of that matrix is zero, then homogeneous linear systems must have infinite many solutions. We'll discuss these cases uh, later on. Now, if we have a three by three system, now, a single equation in a three by three system is what? In, in 3D, 3D plan, it is what? A straight line? No. A plane. a plane, sir. A plane, yes. Now we are talking about three planes. These are not straight lines. Now, in order to get the unique solution, in fact, you have three planes in 3D, three planes, okay? You have three planes in 3D, which are coinciding uh, at a single point, okay? Only one point, it is possible. Let me share you uh, a picture of uh, my slides. Let me share you so that you can understand better this situation in in these things you have my slides <clears throat> now you can see different uh, three planes they are intersecting in a different way in the first option three planes are parallel in this case the system, three by no three system, uh, has no solution. Okay, in the second case, in the first row, second case, you can see that three planes are intersecting at a single point. In this case, this three by three system has a unique solution. In the third case, first row, third option, third case, you can see that the planes are intersecting, but they do not have some common uh, region of intersection. Do they have common region of intersection? No, no. sir. No, so sir. in this case as well, the system has no solution. In second row, first option. No, sir. Again, there is no common intersection region in three planes, so no solution. In the second case, second row, you have only yes. one solution. Okay. In the second row, third option, what is what is this infinite picture showing? That in, all the three region. planes are on the top of each other. All the three planes are on the top of each other. So we have infinite many solutions. In the third row, first case is two planes are on the top of each other. And the third plane is 
intersecting them and what is the common common region of intersection is what is that straight line is a straight line so how many point of intersections are there infinite many solutions so in in this case if you have two planes which are on the top of each other and the third plane is intersecting them in this case the common region of intersection is a straight line and you would still have infinite many solution in third row second and third case is what all the three planes are intersecting but the point region of intersection is a straight line so infinitely many solutions again so again we have infinite many solutions so these are some of the possibilities of uh, intersection of three planes i'm, I'm sorry for interrupting sir are we talking about uh, the uh, the third row and the last two so shouldn't they have one unique solution no no it's, it's, it's can a you see can you see what oh, is the point of intersection sorry what it's, it's can you see what is the region of intersection of these three planes so region of intersection of these three planes is a intersection is a straight line so there are infinite many point of intersections so in that case you must have infinite many solutions i hope sir, you get it sir could you explain sir could you please explain the example right in the middle second row and second one yes it's a unique solution because all the three planes are intersecting only at a single point it's just like the uh, example above it on the first row first row second op second option and second row second option they are almost same but similar the the in the second case second row the third plane is intersecting two uh, planes uh, with an angle inclinedly you can see that theek hai jo first row second option hai usme all the planes are basically what they are orthogonal to each other this is the only difference but their common region of intersection is only a single point which is a point of intersection in that in these two cases you must have unique solution okay sir can, can you explain the uh, first row third one in that case there is no common region of intersection there is there are only two possibilities either you have only one point of intersection or you have one straight line as a uh, intersection of three line three planes theek hai agar teenon planes ka common region of intersection nahi hai then there is no solution yahan pe first row third option mein आपके पास ब्लू और ग्रीन इंटरसेक्ट कर रहे हैं एक स्ट्रेट लाइन बन रही है और फिर रेड क्रॉस कर रहा है दो स्ट्रेट लाइंस और आ रही हैं आपके पास तो तीनों का कॉमन रीजन ऑफ इंटरसेक्शन नहीं है वी हैव टू लुक एट द कॉमन रीजन ऑफ इंटरसेक्शन ऑफ ऑल द थ्री प्लेन्स ठीक है आई होप यू गेट इट एनी क्वेश्चन ओके so these are the possibilities but uh, we can i'm going to stop sharing i hope everybody uh, has seen it now let's get back to the board now let's discuss them mathematically geometrically this is what happens uh, when the three uh, planes are intersecting please turn off your mics mute your mics kindly someone is talking and i don't know who is that who is that person now how to uh, investigate mathematically whether uh, there will be a unique solution or not okay the most important thing of a linear system uh, is what unique solution you need to know whether the given linear system has a unique solution or not what is that you solve these three, three equations and you get single value of x single value of y and single value of z without solving uh, the linear system we can also uh, 
see that whether the given linear system has a unique solution or not. And what is the, the method of doing that? You write this system in a matrix form, two minus two, four, three minus three, six times x, y, z is equal to five, 10, 15. See, okay? If this coefficient matrix A, if we can write that linear system into this form. If this coefficient matrix A is non-singular, non-singular means what? Determinant of A is not equal to zero. Okay? Sir. Or we can say that A is invertible. G beta, bole. Sir, why don't we write A as a vector? A as a vector? Why? Yes, sir. A, a into x vector is equal to b vector. Shouldn't a be a vector? A is a scalar. How can we write it as a vector? A is basically a matrix which has these all these entries of uh, uh, these unknown coefficients. Okay, a ko hum kaise likhte hain? Uh, I told you in the previous lecture how to write a. You put the coefficient of these unknowns. Uh, first equation, first row. One minus one, two. One minus one, two. And then second equation, two minus two, four. Two minus two, four. And then third equation, three minus three, six. Three minus three, six. So this is basically a matrix. We yes, call it matrix. It. Okay. Now the unknown vectors are same in all three equations. Then we can write it uh, in, a, in a column vector form. Okay. So we call it uh, a vector X. And this is a vector right inside. Last time we discussed matrices and vectors. Okay. If you have any further question, you can ask me. So, so if A is non singular, huh. please sentence finish. If A is non singular, what does it mean? Determinant of A is not zero, A is invertible, or you can say that A inverse exists. All these three statements are same. ठीक है अगर कोफिशियंट मैट्रिक्स किसी भी लीनियर सिस्टम का नॉन सिंगुलर है इनवर्टेबल है ए इनवर्स एग्जिस्ट करता है डिटरमिनेंट नॉन जीरो है इन दैट केस वी मस्ट हैव अ यूनिक सॉल्यूशन ऑफ दैट लीनियर सिस्टम ठीक है वी डिस्कस ऑल दीस थिंग्स हाउ टू फाइंड द डिटरमिनेंट हाउ टू चेक वेदर द ए इज इनवर्टेबल और नॉट विल डिस्कस दीस थिंग्स आफ्टर डिस्कसिंग द लीनियर सिस्टम्स when we go to the next topic uh, where we uh, discuss matrices in detail but for now we are discussing linear systems uh, i hope you get it how to uh, write uh, any 3 by 3 system into matrix form and then now mathematically uh, if you can see here that third equation is what is a multiple of first equation, okay? If we multiply first equation by three, we'll get the third equation, okay? It means these two equations are identical. It means these two planes are on the top of each other. They are identical planes. Now, if the third plane is intersecting them, then uh, there is only one option of the intersection will get a straight line of intersection. In that case, we'll have infinite many solutions, okay? In infinite many solutions, uh, while solving this system, what we do, we have to introduce uh, parameters, okay? Free parameters. Yes, we have two by two system. But uh, we are not going to solve this system uh, simultaneously or by using substitution method. They are very, uh, you can say, complicated or time-taking methods. Uh, we have to put a lot of effort uh, to solve this system uh, simultaneously or by using sub substitution method. Now we are going to discuss a uh, rather sophisticated technique by using matrices, how to solve these linear systems. Even this technique will be applied on all the linear systems 
whether you have 10 by 10 linear system, 20 by 20, 4 by 4, 15 by 15, or 100 by 100. Okay. Now, yes, sir, ask your question. Sir, is there a line or are all the planes on the other side? No, two planes, jo hai, two planes, they are on the top of each other. And the third plane is intersecting those two planes. So we must get a straight line. So because the other one also means that if we do times two, then the first one will become one. And if we multiply the other one with 1.5, then the third one will become one. So that means... I haven't seen it. In fact, all these three planes are on the top of each other. Sure. Thank you. Sure. In fact, all these three planes are on the top of each other. Okay? So we must again get infinite many solutions. So in fact, we have only one plane. X minus Y plus 2Z is equal to 5. Okay? The other two planes are uh, exactly same as the first plane. If I do this a little different here, then uh, plus Z or here 7, then these two planes are same and the third plane will intersect uh, the other two planes and we'll get uh, a straight line. So we'll have infinite many solutions. Even in this case, if you have only one plane, uh, only one plane, here fourth or here tenth. Okay? Even in this case, that all the three planes are identical, if they are on the top of each other, uh, how to solve this situation? In this case, you have to introduce two free variables. For example, I say that y is t and z is, uh, is t1 and t2 or y is equal to t and z is equal to r, maybe. I'm going to introduce two free variables where t and r belongs to set of real numbers. Okay. In this case, now x would be what? x is equal to, uh, equal to 5 plus y. What is the value of y? t and minus 2z. What is the value of z? It is 2r. Now, this is your x. y is what? It is your t. And z is what? It is your r. So this is now the parametric kind of solution of the given linear system in which we have introduced two free variables. Remember that in a linear system, if we have one equation and three unknowns, we can only find the value of one unknown. For two equations and two unknowns, we can find two unknown, value of two unknowns. If you have one equation or more than one variables, then you can only find one variable ki value. If you have two equations and three unknowns, then you can only find two variables. The third one you definitely must have free variable. Means, the equations you can find variables ki values find kar sakte if you have variables extra, then you have to introduce free variables. Introduce karne padenge. Otherwise, you cannot have solution. Yes, now ask the question. Sir, so this uh, equation 1x minus 1y plus 2 is equal to 5 and 2x minus 2y. So this, is this an equation example of unique solution? Which one? This one? So the one you just uh, raised off. Raised off. No, this is not an example of unique solution. In a unique solution, uh, you should, all the three equations must be different from each other. They should not be right. multiple of other equations. Okay? Means the coefficient matrix must have determinant non-zero. When the coefficient matrix ka determinant zero will be zero, then you will have a situation that you have two planes, either they are uh, on the top of each other or they are parallel. In that case, we don't have any solution. Okay? So, this situation arises in that, uh, in this case. Unique solution, we are not discussing. Basically, we are discussing infinite many solutions. Unique solution so 5 is, minus t plus 2r. What is it? 5 minus t plus 2r. What is it? 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 अब इस इसको इसको हम कैसे लिख सकते हैं फर्दर इसको अगर हम सॉल्यूशन की फॉर्म में लिखें x y z तो ये क्या होगा इसको हम लिख सकते हैं 5 plus t minus 2 r and t and r 
ठीक है तो यहां पे यू कैन एड जीरो हेयर एंड यू कैन एड जीरो हेयर यू कैन एड जीरो प्लस जीरो प्लस दिस नाउ यू कैन सेपरेट दीज वैक्टर्स एंड यू कैन टेक कॉमन आर एंड टी सो आई कैन राइट हेयर फाइव जीरो जीरो प्लस टी टाइम्स वन वन जीरो एंड प्लस आर टाइम्स माइनस टू जीरो वन so this is your solution of the given 3 by 3 system which has infinite many solutions where t and r they are free parameters and uh, they belongs to r we have this infinite many solution theek okay? hai uh, any question oh okay. yeah yes sir so can you please repeat what you yes sir so can you please repeat what you were saying about that if we have two solutions and if we have Three variables, then we can find two uh, okay. solutions for two variables. Uh, we'll we'll discuss this uh, later on. Uh, next lecture, me, these things we will study in more detail. Then you would definitely get it. However, uh, I'm going to tell you, as many as you have equations, there are many variables. If the number of equations or number of unknowns, if they are equal, then we can find the value of each variable. But if you have less number of equations, and more number of unknown variables then we have to introduce free variables theek hai agar aapke paas for example agar aapke paas do equations hain aur char unknowns hain theek hai i'm going to introduce uh, minus x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 plus 5x4 is equal to maybe 1 And uh, 2x1 minus 3x2 plus 7x3 plus 9x4 is equal to 1. Now you have two equations, but unknown variables are four. You can only find the values of unknown variables equal to two. Jitni number of equations hai aapke pas. You can find values of at at most two variables here. Because two equations hai. दो वेरिएबल्स की वैल्यूज आएंगी बाकी दो वेरिएबल्स कोई से भी जो है वो आपको फ्री वेरिएबल इंट्रोड्यूस करने पड़ेंगे डेफिनेटली ठीक है क्योंकि जितनी नंबर ऑफ इक्वेशंस होती हैं उतने ही नंबर ऑफ वेरिएबल्स की वैल्यूज आप फाइंड कर सकते हैं इससे ज्यादा नहीं इस चीज को हम मजीद भी डिस्कस करेंगे वैल्यू फॉर एक्स वन और एक्स टू और एक्स वन और एक्स फोर नो इट इट इज नॉट मैथमेटिकली पॉसिबल वी आर Capable enough. ठीक है. Don't okay. think that we are we we are unable to find. In fact, nobody can find it. ठीक है. जितनी equations होती हैं. हम इस तरह कर सकते हैं कि x को हम parameter बना दें. Like x को हम t ले लें. इस तरह हो सकता है. कोई से दो variables को आपको parameter लेने पड़ेगा. Free variables introduce करने पड़ेंगे. ठीक है. कोई से दो ले लें. The other two can be found. तो मैं ये पूछ रहा था कि क्या ये हमारी मर्जी होगी कि हम x1 और x4 वो वो जो दो हमने निकालने हैं वो हाँ, दो x1 वो, वो आपकी दो मर्जी है कोई से दो फ्री इंट्रोड्यूस कर दें कोई से दो की वैल्यू फाइंड कर लें ओके ओके सर दिस इट डिपेंड्स ऑन यू 